Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. We are in the process of creating a blogger template from scratch and we have started with the design. So we have already designed all the elements of the desktop homepage. Now in this video, I'll show you how to create the search bar animation for our website. Here is our design as of now. So here we can see we have created all the sections of our homepage. And uh, now in this video, I'll show you how to add the search bar. So we have this search icon over here. And when we click on the search icon, we should have a search bar appear over here. And then the user should be able to search for something and uh, the results will be displayed on the screen. And then I'll also show you how to create a read more button for your blog post. So after every blog post down here, you'll have a read more button. So let's get started. We'll go to the source code of our website. And uh, first of all, let's create the HTML for the search bar. So here, just after the search icon, let's create a division with the class of search container and in that we'll create a division with the class of blog search and in this we'll create an input type of text and then we'll also create an input type of submit and for the value let's just type search so search will be displayed on the button Let's go back to our uh, web page and here we can see the search bar is being displayed over here. Now it should not be displayed by default. It should be displayed when we click on this search icon. So let's go ahead and uh, let's style it first of all. So we'll add a comment. So we have the search container inside this division called top nav. So let's target that over here. We'll type dot top nav dot search container and uh, we'll set the position to absolute and we'll set the right position to zero so here we can see that our search box is displayed at the right of our uh, website but we want it to be displayed at the right side of the wrapper division so for that let's add position of relative to the wrapper division so that uh, the search box will have the position relative to the wrapper division so he will type top nav wrapper and we'll set the position to relative now we can see that the search box is at the right of the wrapper now let's set a top position so here we will set the top position to 40 pixels all right now let's style the input field so here we'll type top nav search container input of type text and we'll set a padding of 8 pixels top and bottom 24 pixels left and right and uh, we will set the border to zero and we'll also give a box shadow of zero four pixels eight pixels negative two pixels rgba zero 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 and zero point two so this is our search field now let's style the submit button so that top nav search container input of type submit so for this also we'll have a padding of 8 pixels and 24 pixels and we'll set the background color to FFE259 and we'll remove the border and since we removed the border we have one pixel less height at the top and at the bottom so let's add a border of one pixel solid of the same color all right now we have the correct height for the button let's also add the same box shadow over here so I'll copy this line of code and paste it over here. And with that, the styling of our search box is complete. Now what we need to do is the default state of this search box is not over here. So at the beginning, it should not be displayed as well. So we will add a class called active to this search container. And when we have this class active on this search container, we will display this. If you don't have the class active to the search container, then we won't display it. So we'll be adding and removing the classes using JavaScript when we click on this uh, search icon. So here we will type top now search container dot active. Now here you have to keep in mind that you should not have a space between search container and active 
because here we are telling CSS that we want to have search container as well as active classes to the same division. All right, once we have that, we will set the top position to 40. So let's copy this over here and uh, we will set the opacity to 1 and uh, here we will set the opacity to 0 and then here we will set the pointer events to auto. Pointer events is basically when we are able to click on the element and when we are able to interact with the element. So we will set the pointer events to auto when we are active and when we are not active, we'll set the pointer events to none so that no one can click on that. Now at the beginning, we will set the top position to 24 pixels. So let's go to our browser and uh, let's see whether it works. So right click over here and click on inspect and uh, for the search container we'll also add a class of active and let's see whether we get the search box displayed and we can see that the search box is being displayed and when we remove the active class it gets uh, hidden so we'll also add a transition so that uh, we'll have a smooth animation so we'll type transition and we'll set a duration of 400 milliseconds. All right, that's it with the styling of the search box. Now we need to add and remove the class active to the search container. So for that, we need to access the search icon division. And whenever this division is clicked, we want to add the active class to the search container division. So for that, we have to use JavaScript. First of all, let's check whether we have included JavaScript. So here we can see we have already added the link of JavaScript in our HTML. So let's go to our main.js file. First of all, let's reference the search icon division. So we'll type const search icon. And uh, for referencing any icon from uh, HTML, you have to type document dot query selector. And in that you have to type the class name or the ID name. So since we have the class, we have to type dot and then the class name. If we have an ID, then we have to type hash and then the ID name. So here we'll type dot search icon. So this is the class that we have for the search icon. If you go to the HTML, here we can see we have this division with the class of search icon. Now we also want to reference the search container division. So let's type const search container and we'll type document dot query selector search container. All right, now we need to add an event listener to the search icon division. So what an event listener does is that whenever we click or interact with the division, it will help us perform some task. So to add an event listener, you have to type the name of the element. We'll type search icon dot add event listener. And in this, we have to type the name of the event. So we'll type click. So whenever someone clicks on search icon, the following code will be executed. So here we'll create a function. And in this function, we can type whatever we want to happen when the search icon division is clicked. So we want to add and remove the active class to the search container division. So we type search container dot class list. Now if you type dot add, then the class will be added. And if you type remove, the class will be removed. But we have another method called toggle. So what this does is that if you already have the class, then the class will be removed. And if you don't have the class, then the class will be added. So we'll type active. All right, so now let's check whether it works. Let's go back to our website and uh, let's click on the search icon. And we can see that the search box is being displayed. Let's click on it once again and it disappears. So the search animation is working all right. Now the next thing we'll do in this video is uh, to add the read more button over here below every post. So for that, let's go back to the HTML and uh, here after the last paragraph of every post, we will add a division and we'll give it a class of read more container. And in that we'll create an anchor tag and we'll also give it a class of read more. And uh, here we'll just type read more. So let me just copy and paste this to all the other posts. So here we can see below every post, we have this read more link. Now let's style this. So let's go back to our CSS. So what we'll do is uh, we will set a specific width to our uh, 
post body and uh, then we will add the read more button over here so that if you want to read the whole post you have to click on the read more button so for that let's also add some more paragraph to our post so let me just copy this paragraph and paste it down here I'll just do that with all the other posts so that we have some more content all right now we have more content and uh, now we can style it properly so let's go to our style.css we'll just add a comment now here we will reduce the height of the post body so in our index.html we can see we have this division with the class of post body so let's reduce the height we'll type post body and uh, let's set a height of 180 pixels so here we can see now we have a height of 180 pixels for the post body now let's also set the overflow to hidden so that anything outside this division will not be seen so here we can see everything else is uh, hidden so even if you have a long post it will not be displayed over here you just have this preview now what I want to do is I want to add a fade background over here so that uh, you will have this opacity of zero for this top and uh, as we go down the color will be white so for that we will use linear gradient background for the CSS now if you want to easily generate linear gradient code for CSS you can just search for linear gradient generator on Google and you'll get this website it's called cssgradient.io and here you can see we can add different colors over here and uh, and what I've done over here is that for the last one I have set the opacity to full and for this one I have this opacity over here and for this one the same color so this is how it looks at the bottom we have the white color and as you go top we have the opacity of zero so now to copy this CSS you have to just click on this button called copy to clipboard now we'll add the linear gradient to the after element of the post body so let me just explain that to you I'll just type post body and uh, here I'll type colon colon after now I'll just type content and leave it blank and let me just give it a height of 100 pixels and a width of 100 percent and uh, and let me add the background color to red so that we can see it right now and we also have to set the position relative to the body so for the body we will type position relative and for the after element we will type position absolute and for the position we will type bottom so it will be at the bottom of the post body so here we can see this is the after element so for each of the posts we have this after element and we will add the linear gradient color that we got over here to this after element so that we will have this uh, fading background so we'll just remove this background from here and we'll just paste the linear gradient code now let's go back to our website and see how it looks so here we can see we have this fading background you may have seen this in a lot of websites this indicates that there is more to this post so now let's also style the read more button so let's type post body read more container and we'll set the position to absolute and bottom to zero and we'll also set the Z index to 100 so that it will always be seen so here we can see the read more button is being displayed now let's text align it to the center so we'll type text align center and it is not being centered let's check what is the width of the read more container so we'll just set a background color so right now we just have the width of the content so let's set the left position to 0 and the right position to 0 now we have the 100% width let's remove the background all right now let's style this anchor tag so here we'll type post body read more container read more and uh, we'll set the text decoration to none to get rid of the underline and we'll set the text transform to uppercase and uh, we'll also set the font weight to bold I think we can move the read more button a little bit to the top so here for bottom we will set it to 24 pixels or maybe 16 pixels or right, that looks fine 
So we have the read more button as well for the posts. So that's basically it for this video. In this video, we have added the animation to the search box and we have also added the read more button to our blog posts. Now in the next section, I'll show you how to make this design responsive so that uh, even the mobile users can have a great experience on your website. So I'll leave the link of the current source code in the description below so that you can follow along. And uh, if you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.